Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. I hope you will enjoy today's video, so let's just get into it. If I go to the grocery store and you come up to me and say, I think I've seen one of your TikToks before. I don't know what to say back. I am probably going to lie to you and say, I don't have a TikTok. Never did, never do, never will. So don't, man with a beard. I know exactly what you mean. I also feel pretty ashamed if I post TikToks. I love all these TikToks. What do women bring to the table? I don't know, maybe the ability to carry life into this world and literally carry your child for nine months. Just a little, just a little fact that we do. Nothing big. Anyways, have a great day, everyone. Sure, you too. But until you're able to do that all by yourself without my help, not your best argument. And just in case I don't want you to do that, what else you got? If you want to be my boy, <laughs> my boyfriend, you have to ask. For example, the guy that I am now dating, I can call him my boyfriend because he asked me. We were dating for a few months and we had said I love you and everything, but we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend yet. We just hadn't had that conversation, which was fine. It was fine. <laughs> and then randomly one day he's talking and he says, my girlfriend. And I said, who are you talking about? Because it's not me. You haven't asked me to be your girlfriend. And he's like, oh, I have been calling you my girlfriend for months. Like, I thought you were my girlfriend. And I was like, secretly, I've been calling you my boyfriend. But we're not yet. It's not official. Like I just said, the word official. When people are like, oh, are they official? They mean, are they boyfriend and girlfriend? If that is an official thing, it needs an official asking. So of course I was dramatic and I was like, oh, what do you mean you haven't gotten down on one knee and proposed the girlfriend miss the girlfriend trip i was like where is the white horse and carriage and you proclaiming me to the world as your girlfriend as you asked for my hand but really i was just trying to make the point that like that's a privilege to be someone's boyfriend or girlfriend so you need to ask i told him i'm committed to you and i've been committed to you i just want that to be a big deal and I want us to make it a big deal. Also, that's just something about me is I like to make things a big deal in a relationship. I think that's really healthy to make like small things, even though this isn't a small thing, a big deal. It's so much more fun in a relationship when you make big deals out of things. Big deals out of things? Uh, maybe, who knows? I don't care all that much because all I was thinking was that poor guy. You've said I love you to each other and that didn't matter because he never asked you. And unfortunately, I believe you. You want to make a big deal out of everything. I can help but wonder how much of a big deal you're gonna want to make out of your wedding. Three, four, five hundred guests. Huge wedding that's gonna leave your future husband broke. Yeah, because you're not gonna have it any other way, right? There are women who would do everything to be in your shoes and you can't even appreciate what you have. One day, when you're older, you're going to run into the guy who broke your heart when you were younger, and he's going to be bald, okay? Or severely graying. So it just doesn't even matter. Or both, bald and graying. And you, on the other hand, would be more beautiful than ever, even with sagging everywhere and with your extra 50 pounds. Do you know what cracks me up, right? <laughs> you know when someone's married? and they're talking about their partner and they'd refer to them, obviously, as like my husband or my wife, whatever. I feel like they're bragging. <laughs> I feel like that's, it's unnecessary, like they're showing off. It's not unnecessary. You have every right. That is your husband, that is your wife. And they're like, yeah, like, oh, I went out for dinner with my husband or like in a restaurant, they're like, oh yeah, my husband's just running late, whatever. It's like, all right, got to tell everyone you're married. That, it, it's literally normal, like you're not gonna call me your boyfriend or girlfriend. But it cracks me up. <laughs> my husband, my husband and I. All right! <laughs> yeah, no, seriously ladies, stop addressing your husband as your husband because it upsets the poor lady here. Or at least wait until she finds one and then it's okay, I guess. You can always say, I had dinner with John. And if she asks, who's John? I don't know, maybe find a good excuse and change the subject. I am a millennial and my 16 year old sister is Gen Z and I'm going to tell you guys all of the things that I do that she says are completely lame and uncool while I get ready for the day. It is uncool to use GIFs or memes. Apparently separate 
the duck face and the peace sign are fine. Together, absolutely not. Next is self-deprecating humor, okay? If you make fun of yourself in any way, shape, or form, you are an old loser. I cannot take these seriously, oh my god. <laughs> Next is zooming in to your face while you're doing an Instagram story or purposely making ugly faces. Gen Z thinks you're a loser if you do a side part. <laughs> who, who came up with this? Next is capital letters or punctuation in general. Listen, I just learned what this meant maybe six months ago. Don't be a pick me, I don't know. Also, having no photos on Instagram. If you are a millennial, stay strong. Hopefully these tips from Gen Z can help you be less of an old ancient loser like me. Uh, and if you're Gen Z, please don't roast me in the comments. I am genuinely terrified of you. Bye. Terrified of what or who or whatever. You know, the only reason they don't make self-deprecating jokes is because they're afraid they're gonna hurt their own fifis. Terrified of that? Come on now. Finding a relationship after 30 is probably one of the best life hacks. Obviously on paper, yeah, it'd be nice to find your partner in your 20s and build that life together while you're building your careers and following your dreams and all that stuff. But that's just not the reality for some people. Many, many, many of my close friends did not find their partners until their 30s, some of them even their 40s, and they are living their best lives. Because let's be real, like in your 20s, you are stupid and you make stupid decisions like I did when I married my ex-husband at 23 years old. <laughs> but in your 30s, you are so much smarter. You put up with so much less bullshit. You know what you want, you've figured out where you want to go in life, and you're going to find a partner that's following that dream and that pathway with you. And I'm sure you are amazing, and if you're single and amazing, there's also going to be other single amazing people out there. Or maybe they're just one divorce away from being available. I'm joking, but not really. But my advice is don't compare yourself to other people and their timelines because you have your own journey and your own timeline, and life is not linear. My advice, from what I've seen with a lot of my friends in their 30s and 40s dating, is Continue to live your best life, be your best self, and the right person is gonna follow along and wanna join you for the ride. If you're still single in your 30s, it means you haven't settled for the wrong person, and that's a win in my book. Of course it is, because you need a good excuse for why you're divorced. When it comes to everything else, you're smart in your 20s. But when it comes to relationships, not that much. Before you even go to college, you already know what you want. You already start making big decisions. I want to be a lawyer. I'm gonna go to law school. I want to be a doctor. I'm gonna go to medical school. But when it comes to dating, oh, no, I'm just a girl. Like, oh my God, I don't know any better. In any other part of your life, you're slain. You're crushing it. But when it comes to relationships, yeah, I was just not that smart in my 20s. Seriously? Come on now. Do you guys want to know how I know I have the best best friend in the entire world? Last night I FaceTimed her and I'm telling her about yet another crush I have on a guy who doesn't know I exist. And as I'm going on and on about how much I need him, um, she's what I thought doing her homework. And I'm like, I just think I need to manifest him into my life. And she goes, oh, don't worry about that. I'm already working on it. And flips her camera around to this. <laughs> I thought she was doing her homework. Little did I know this bitch was putting a spell on him. That is the epitome of true friendship and girlhood. She's like, I'm gonna sleep with this under my pillow tonight. It literally says, blank will be Steph's boyfriend. Like. <laughs> she is your best friend, I'll give you that. That's concerning to be honest, but don't matter. Did the spell work though? Cause obviously whatever meds the two of you are on, don't. One of the best pieces of advice I've ever read about relationships is this. A man calling you baby means nothing. A man moving into your house means nothing. A man calling you his girlfriend means nothing. A man marrying you means nothing. Do you know what means something? A man changing his ways to keep you. That's what means something. That's an opinion, not an advice. I'm gonna help you out because you kind of need it. An advice goes pretty much like this. Don't stop until you find that man that is gonna change his way for you. And you know, best of luck with that. I'm also gonna help you out with this because I'm nice like that. What you see on that thing that it's called a TV, that is not real life. Those are movies or TV shows. The fact that there's a term domestic housewife implies that there's a feral housewife. I'm sure you are, but this is gonna be the end of the video. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.